This is Greg Traveline with Offshore Engineer TV, and we're very pleased to be joined today by Thomas Creech, the Technical Director of LIFE, to discuss the recently installed electrolyzer on a hybrid renewable energy platform. The first time hydrogen will be produced offshore and from a renewable energy wave power. Thomas, to start, can you give us a by the numbers look at LIFE today? Yeah, so uh, LIFE, we, we are an hydrogen producer. So it means that we, um, in fact, we, uh, we develop, we finance, uh, we are doing all the engineering and after we operate all our production sites. Um, we have a first production site uh, based in France, uh, in the west coast of France. Um, and this production site is already directly connected to three wind turbines using seawater and producing um, from 2021, uh, more than 300 kilograms per day of hydrogen. So it means that since 2021, um, we sell hydrogen to different off-takers for mobility usage, for industry usage. Um, and now we are deploying um, all this production site everywhere in, in France and in Europe um, with um, different targets. So our main target are to, uh, is to, uh, to have 55 megawatts deployed around Europe by 2024. So it means more than 20 tonne per day of hydrogen and 200 megawatt by, by end of 2025, beginning of 2026. So it's, let's say our roadmap onshore and uh, just say we run the company, it's a great company created in 2017. Um, we were eight uh, this date. We are now more than 150 people and just here to, uh, you know, to, uh, to provide hydrogen, to provide green hydrogen uh, in order to, uh, to have a direct impact today on our CO2 emission. So, you know, obviously the, the impetus for this call, this interview was to discuss the GEPS, the GEPS Techno Project Hybrid Renewable Energy Platform. Can you give an overview of the project and the timeline of the project uh, with insights on LIFE's contribution? Yeah, yeah, of course. So in fact, uh, on LIFE's side, we really believe in offshore production from the beginning. Um, why? Because um, we will need um, a development of massive hydrogen production site. And, and for that, you will need a large amount of uh, renewable uh, electricity. And for that, um, in offshore, you have wind farm, which are, let's say, between 20 and 50 times bigger than the onshore wind farm. You have an availability of the electricity, which is between two and three times higher than the one uh, at our onshore. So you have um, a real interest to go offshore to produce uh, hydrogen. And so it's why um, we also have this first production site uh, in France onshore, which is directly connected to renewable energy, energy sources and which already use seawater to produce uh, hydrogen. So it means that our first onshore production site um, is already, let's say, representative of what we will have offshore tomorrow. And the second step, indeed, um, was to um, prove that it's feasible uh, to produce offshore. Because today, nobody has never deployed an electrolyzer offshore. And so it's the goal of this demonstration to prove that, to prove that we can today produce hydrogen offshore. And so in France, you have um, a testing area, which is called SEMREV. It's a testing area where you already have a floating wind turbine and where you already have this barge, uh, the barge from JEPS technology. And so we decide um, to um, uh, take this barge and to put all our hydrogen production sites on this barge and after to deploy it offshore and to connect it directly to the floating wind farm, which is already in place. And so where we are today, we, we start this project in uh, 2019 and just in uh, one and a half year, we manage the deployment of this barge. And now we are ready to produce offshore and we will inaugurate this platform in just one week uh, on the 22nd of September, 2022. Again, in the offshore environment then, what is the minimum viable unit size? I know, I know we're just in the proof phase right here. Yeah. What do you see as the minimum viable unit size and what would be the largest? Yeah, uh, indeed. So this first um, deployment, it's uh, uh, indeed just a demonstrator. Uh, we will produce 400 kilograms per day. And clearly, it's uh, not uh, economically feasible to have this kind of this size of uh, uh, offshore production sites. But in parallel, in fact, uh, we have worked with um, 
um, different platform manufacturer in order to design our large scale adogen offshore adogen production platform. And so today we are already ready. We already secured some, uh, you know, uh, manufacturing facilities in order to be able to uh, manufacture it. And on concerning the size, uh, we target size um, starting at around 100 megawatts and after deploying to 200, 320, 400, 500 megawatts. Our goal at the end is to achieve um, uh, around three gigawatts uh, of offshore production platform by 2030. So, you know, obviously you've been doing this on the land. What specifically are the challenges to taking this technology offshore? You know, for example, will the electrolyzers need much adaptation to for the conditions, both environmental uh, and also variable loads? Yeah, yeah, of course, so the different things. So first of first, uh, on this floating barge, um, we will manage, you know, all the movement of the tilt that we will have. We are talking about movement and tilt uh, around more than 15 degrees uh, and acceleration around 0 0.5 G. So it's, um, let's say, quite huge movement. Um, indeed, we'll have all the salt uh, environment, but also, you know, uh, this barge will be deployed offshore, so more than 30 kilometers from the shore. And so we have developed all our, let's say, remote operation system in order to be able to um, operate uh, this uh, electrolyzer at 30 kilometers from the shore in order to be able to adapt, you know, the production depending on the weather, depending on the wave, depending on the electricity, in order to be able to produce uh, green hydrogen through the, the, the floating wind turbines that we have. After, we also have work on all um, let's say the optimization of operation and maintenance, because when you deploy this kind of infrastructure, this kind of asset offshore, um, all offshore operation will cost a lot. So the idea was to optimize, to reduce, in fact, all the maintenance that we have to do offshore in order to be able to optimize all the costs. So as an example, on the same rev uh, testing area, so where we, 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 we deploy this demonstrator, in winter, it's just impossible to go on the platform impossible you have too much wave so we never go during all the winter on the platform due to the weather condition and so we have rock in order to be sure that during all this phase so during at least six months we will not have any maintenance operation so we have developed all this let's say this component in order to optimize that and we will validate it through same rev in order to confirm that we can have a business model for all the lifetime of our, of our let's say, uh, next large scale platform. Uh, when you look at this specific demonstration, what do you hope to prove or learn from it? And in the bigger picture, what's your dream vision for doing this offshore? I guess, what would you say is the optimum scenario? Yeah, so what we want to prove, in fact, uh, and it was the, the, the same things for our first production site. We, in fact, we, we have created life, so in 2017, uh, with one goal, one goal, which is to stop CO2 emission, to give a solution to stop CO2 emission. We are all today in this um, global warming issue uh, and we have to do something for our planet. And hydrogen today, I, I, I'm not saying that it's uh, the only solution, but hydrogen is one of the solutions to decarbonate mobility, to decarbonate industry. But for that, you need green hydrogen. And what we have shown with our first onshore production, which is directly connected to renewable energy sources, is that we can do it now. We, we don't have to wait. We can do it now. And so it's what we have done onshore. And now we have all our pipeline. We are talking about a five gigawatt pipeline of projects that we have now in order to deploy this onshore production site. And we want to do the same offshore. Through this demonstrator, we want to prove that we can do it now. We don't have to wait years and years in order to deploy it. We have to do it now in order to save our planet. So what we want to show is we can do it. We have done it in just one and a half year, between one and a half year and two years. So what are you waiting for? We just have to do it now. And after, um, what we expect, what is our dream? Um, again, we have a, a target of um, three gigawatt uh, of offshore production by 2030. And let's say my, my dream or um, what I expect is that all the regulation uh, will, uh, all the permitting um, subject uh, will allow us to go as fast as 
we can, because we can prove that it's feasible today. We can prove that the technology is here. We can prove that we can finance it. So we just have to do it. With that as a backdrop, can you discuss the market for this technology as you see it? Yeah, uh, so indeed we have different um, partnerships. So as you said, with uh, Aquaterra and Bor, with Doris and with Chantier Atlantic. In fact, it's um, for us, uh, to have in our, uh, let's say, in our pocket, uh, different concepts in order to be able to deploy all these uh, offshore production sites everywhere in Europe. So indeed, with Doris on floating uh, wind turbine, with Aquaterra and Bor on, uh, um, let's say, the reuse of Jacob Rig, and with Chantier Atlantic, um, with a production site, with in fact fixed uh, platform production site, and with this, uh, let's say, three concept we have the possibility now to deploy our production site offshore if we were in Europe and even in the, in the, in the, in the world. In Europe, um, let's say that, of course, in the North Sea, in the Baltic Sea, you have, let's say, the more huge market because you have a lot of wind farm in this, uh, in this area. Even in, uh, you know, in UK, in Scotland, uh, they already announced more than 15 gigawatts of development uh, in the coming years. Uh, even in France, uh, uh, Mr. Macron, the president, uh, announced um, a goal to have four, 40 gigawatt deployed by 2050. Uh, so all the country uh, now announce all this wind farm development everywhere in Europe. Uh, so I think mainly in North Sea and in Baltic Sea. And the idea is to, um, to uh, combine uh, this hydrogen production site with this offshore development. And uh, even uh, Europe uh, yesterday or the day before announced, uh, let's say, uh, a huge um, advancement in the optimization of all the timeline to deploy this uh, this offshore wind farm. So we will uh, surf on this uh, on this um, on this let's say a roadmap and this uh, um, yes commitment in order to be able to deploy it as fast as possible. Uh, so I know you haven't even uh, done this project yet or completed it, but what's next for life after this project? Specifically, how are you investing to parlay this technology to the offshore environment? So through this project now, uh, we will have proof that it's feasible and that it's feasible today. And so now currently we are uh, working to answer to different tender everywhere in Europe. So for example, in Germany, they plan to open tender dedicated to hydrogen offshore production. Uh, so by the end of this year or beginning of next year. So now we are um, answering to this different tender and we are deploying our project. We already have also, you know, all the partnership as you mentioned. So with Aquaterra, with BOR, uh, with Chantier Atlantic, with also uh, HSM and NRC in Netherlands. So we have all this partnership everywhere in Europe also to give us the capability to manufacture and to deploy our project. Because from our side, we are an hydrogen producer. We are not an offshore specialist at the beginning. So it's why we have this, uh, this, uh, this partner partnership in place. And we have also partnership with, uh, let's say, um, uh, asset owner, so like BOR, in order, again, to have a, a mix of company able to uh, deploy it quickly. So um, yes, in the next year, so first um, we will have this uh, uh, offshore platform in operation. So in uh, in uh, in uh, in just one week, we will um, do the experimentation during one year and a half, and in the same time we are working on all uh, the tendering process, but also in our own deployment in order to be able to start offshore deployment by between 2028 and 2030 and achieved this target of 3 gigawatts in 2030.